Baby Abby is learning a famous nursery rhyme, but these children are learning a lot more by having a baby in school. There's a new breed of teachers in primary schools and they are younger than ever before. The idea is that the growth and development of each baby can be incorporated into art, science and technology and maths lessons. The schools which have been doing this believe that bringing babies into class can benefit not just the children, but the parents and the babies themselves. By seeing firsthand the month-to-month -month changes of babies from a social and emotional perspective, they would be able to reflect and learn about their own social and emotional development month on month, year on year throughout the school. The response from the children has been really good. They've been really excited about it. In a way, they're kind of adopting a parent and a new baby, and that baby belongs to them. This is Ryan's 20th visit to Fazakali Primary School in Liverpool. At the tender age of nearly two, he's the youngest member of the Year 4 class. The baby sessions are normally held away from the usual classroom, in a family learning room. Once Ryan is settled in, the rest of the class are brought in. Before every session that we have, we remind them of the ground rules, of what we expect, of their behaviour, um, about if they upset the baby or if the baby begins to cry or mum feels that the baby's not in a safe setting, then the session's brought to an end. Ryan was keen to show off what he's learnt since his last visit. When he first started coming into school, he was quite shy, but now he's always relaxed in class particularly with his older sister, Jessica. The children are encouraged to watch all his behaviour and reflect on how he's developed. Anyone straight away noticed anything different? When Jessica come in the room, Ryan oh. run to her. And I think that's the first time we've ever seen him running, isn't it? We run like that, don't we? And Ryan's running like that with his arms. That's right, so he's starting to use his arm for balance. This project is actually really good for linking in with other curriculum areas. We've been able to link it in when um, the baby was teething with our teeth and eating topic in science. We've linked it in with design technology and um, making baby food. We've also linked it with maths, weights and measures. Um, it's just endless. It can be linked into absolutely any subject. And because you've got that initial real experience that the children have had, it really enthuses them then in those other subject areas as well because they're using those links as motivation. The original concept for this scheme came from Canada, where it's reported to have had a dramatic effect reducing levels of aggression among school children. It was developed originally in schools in Liverpool and Dorset, uh, the idea being to engage with schools in a city, urban environment and also a rural environment. And over the last two years, the content has been developed in collaboration with those schools. Fazakali Primary School in Liverpool has been at the forefront of this scheme. It's an area that has mixed housing. There is a lot of social deprivation within the community, but there's also a fair bit of wealth around as well, so it is a very mixed bag here. The project was launched in school um, two years ago and we thought that it'd be beneficial because a lot of the parents have had issues with school and wanted to make school more of a hub of the community. Finding the right mother and baby is key to making this work. Jackie was the first to be signed up two years ago. She was a mum who was familiar to us at school because she'd had a child who'd gone through our school before and her daughter was actually in my class at the time. So when we found out she was pregnant, we just thought she would be an ideal candidate to come into the school. Come on, we have some sweets? At first, she was very nervous. She's quite a shy person. Um, so we said we would just do one session and see how she felt after that. And we gave her a lot of guidance. My first thing would say no, but then I thought, so I thought, no, why not? I'll be helping the school. So I said, yeah. I'd give, it a, I'd give it a go. Oh, yeah, I was terrified, absolutely terrified. But as they were asking questions and that, I started relaxing a little bit more and I enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. It's an ongoing commitment for mums to undertake as the babies are brought into school every four weeks. Before each new session, the children are encouraged to think about how Ryan may have developed since they last saw him. 
Has he changed in his physical? Has he grown at all? Is he talking more? Has he learnt any new words? So as we talked about on the carpet, you're going to just choose your question and write it on your piece of paper ready for the session. Jackie, when um, Ryan was a baby, you know, when he used to eat more um, softer food, um, can he eat any harder food now? It depends. He's very, very fussy, so So he loves soup and scouse and stuff like that more than anything. But I still mash it up for him a bit, but he wants to start being harder now because he wants to be like the kids. So today we thought we'd look at how he's learning to draw and make marks on paper and control a pencil and look at how that's different to what he's doing and how that's different to what we do now and what you've learnt to do. And here is a picture that Ryan prepared earlier. Would Ryan be able to draw a circle? No. Why not? Abby? Um, because he might not know his shapes and colours. Right. Some of you are very kind enough to bring some of your pictures. Now, you might not have been as young as Ryan when you drew these. Now, here's Jasmine's. Just looking at the picture, would you know what she's drawn? You can see the faces on right. it. Right. Do you think that when Jasmine drew this picture, she was younger than Ryan? About the same age as Ryan? Or a bit older than Ryan? Older. Because when, when you see Ryan's picture, it was just a little like a sc scribble and Jasmine's, yeah, Jasmine knows how to draw a circle. This is a year later. Yeah. Or is this yours, Leah, sweetheart? Yeah. What's Leah drawn? She's drawn the face. Can you see any change there? Jessica? Arms and legs. Right. As well as the face, she's got yeah. arms <coughs> and legs. Now, is that what we look like? No. Is there something missing? Olivia? A body. Right, the body. Initially, when we were approached to take part in the scheme, we were... We did have reservations about how it would work, how the children would react and how they'd behave, but it's been a great, fun way to link in social and emotional development into all parts of the curriculum in a way that gives children a sense of ownership on something and they can act as role models. So it's really been a completely positive experience. Similar experiences have been shared by other schools in the pilot scheme. Seven-month-old Heidi is having her vital statistics taken by a year three class. Her monthly weight change and growth measurements are a useful resource okay. for maths. What length is Heidi now? Straighten out the tape measure, Milton, please, so we get an accurate reading. Six centimetres. Six centimetres. Wow, Heidi. She's growing very tall, isn't she? So you can add that to your information sheet now, can't you? Can you see Heidi's progress from when she was born? She was 2.4 kilograms. What does she weigh now? 8.4 kilograms. Wow. Mish, can I draw my alarm, please? Certainly, Luke. Make sure you go from the first point at the bottom right up to the last point at the top. This is Heidi's fifth session with the children, and she's remarkably relaxed. Hey, Heidi's been great with the children. She's a good baby anyway, so it was an ideal candidate for this sort of project. And the children are fantastic with it also. The maths lesson with Heidi is more formal in structure, but with nine-month-old baby Abby, the focus is on speaking and listening. Could anybody tell me why Abby would want to put that ring into her mouth? Because um, she's teething and it encourages her to get her teeth through and it soothes her as well. I think it gives them a better understanding of how hard it can be bringing up babies when, when, when they do actually see them, when, when they're ratties, I suppose. And, they see the changes and, you know, hear about the nighttime routines and the crying and the feeding and the clothes changing and the nappy changing. It brings it brings it home. This is the nine to 12 month baby girl, which she should be in. So we've gone from this size to this size in nine months. Oh. It might deter them from wanting them so young, possibly. It might spare them on. <laughs> The boys reacted in a similar way to the girls. I guess I didn't see much of a difference between the two. One of the boys just said at the end of the session that he wants one because <laughs> she's so cute. It brings a softer side of them out than it does necessarily in the playground. Twinkle, twinkle. 
will help her develop as well, watching the other kids. With uh, Twinkle Twinkle, she, she makes the signs with her hands. She sees what they're doing, she'll automatically copy. She's at that stage now. And also with uh, Old MacDonald, she started to make the moo sounds and various animal sounds, and that's by watching and copying the other children. By watching the baby's behaviour in class closely, the children are then able to reflect on their own behaviour, whether it's good or bad. Do you know then when Ryan was playing that game with you and he was kicking at you and doing this to you on your face? You enjoyed that, didn't you? You were having a little bit of a laugh and a little bit of a joke about it and so was Ryan, so that was OK. But if Ryan did that at home, maybe to his older brother or sister, or Jackie took him to play in somebody else's house and he did it there. What do you think Jackie should say to him then? Uh, she tell him to stop it. When he's older, he's going to get into the habit of kicking and exactly. hitting people. One of the things that we really focus on in our school is social and emotional aspects of learning. It also makes them feel really mature. Um, about their own behaviour and emotions because it makes them aware that they are actually able to control what they do and they do know the difference between what's right and what's wrong. So it gives them that sense of self-confidence that they can make those choices for themselves and they can choose to do the right thing. Sessions with the baby last about 45 minutes. Then the children continue with their learning in the classroom. After Ryan's visit, they are asked to draw self-portraits. This is Bradley's picture that he's just drawn. It's not finished, but there's something that Megan hasn't drawn when she was younger. And I'm thinking something not to do with the legs. Hands. We have hands, don't we? And on the hands we have? Fingers. Fingers. So at the end of his hand, he has four fingers and then a thumb. And he's even drawn the thumb differently to show the difference. <laughs> Look, where's your ties? Ties, where are they? Yeah. By pointing to your eyes and saying the word, you're actually being a teacher there. Well done. They see Ryan almost as their own little brother, and the children love his visits and Jackie's visits. I think the children would be absolutely devastated if we told them all of a sudden that the sessions were going to end. The plan is that Ryan will continue with these children, coming in until the children have left the school. Ryan's not the only baby here. There are currently five others, and there are plans to expand the scheme to every single class. Without a doubt, it's had a massive impact on our, on our school, and it's down to the warmth and the empathy of the staff and the relationships that staff are ready to build with the parents that's going to see this stand or fall. And we've been blessed here. We've got a fabulous group of parents and staff who make this work.